what do I do before you show up? And that can get very confusing. So it all starts with, okay, we picked a spot. Okay, we found the perfect spot, in this case, out here in the front lawn. Um, second is, Matt, does it have to be level? Yes, it absolutely has to be level. If it's not, especially a coop this big, it's going to look awful. The doors need to function. And also, when you get a coop this large, you've got to make sure, you know, every structure is eventually going to settle. But the best way to prevent it from settling is to make sure the footer, in this case, uh, being a concrete slab underneath the hen house shed area, is solid. And again, you always want to have a flat level surface for the coop to sit on. And then the next question is, you know, Matt, do we put down a base? And if so, what do we use? So you do not have to put down a base. All our coops, no matter if it's custom, Craftsman, Carolina, Cali, doesn't matter. Everything on the bottom is pressure treated lumber. And you have to have that because that's where you're going to have that, that constant battle between wet and dry, wet and dry, and that's what feeds the wood destroying organisms. So by using the pressure treated lumber, you eliminate that. Now in this particular situation, the customer, again, it was in his budget, so he went with best case scenario, is we have that solid slab underneath the hen house and shed area, but when you come out here, it's what I like to call a, a footer or a perimeter of concrete that's about six inches wide, and it's one big giant rectangle. So a couple points to make sure you understand there. You do not want a pad on the inside. You do not want chickens walking on concrete. You want the forest floor. So we have the six inch perimeter and then on top of that you want to make sure that we can attach this coop. And the easiest thing to do is what you do in homes. You know, you set your cinder block, you set your concrete walls, whatever, and then you put on your sill plates. And that's all this piece of wood is right here. And of course we're going to take it a step further. So this is uh, two by six pressure treated lumber that is tap conned down into the concrete and to make it really really nice you can see this they take a router and they put a chamfer bit on it and you have a little 45 degree angle not necessary overkill but why not it makes for a very nice detail and then now that you have this transition from concrete to pressure treated lumber we then can screw the walls down into the sill, sill plate. The other thing I do want to point out as well, and a question we get a lot is what is board and batten siding? And we offer two types of board and batten siding. There's what we call true board and batten siding, which is what this coupe has. And then we have what's called board and batten style. Now true board and batten siding costs a lot more because we do it just like they used to do back in the old days, where you didn't have the technology to make four by eight sheets of plywood. You didn't have the technology to make vinyl siding. You had to go cut a tree down and saw your boards and then you attach your boards you know any you know whatever you had it was eight inches 12 inches in this case it's actually 10 inches you attach your boards and then you have this gap in between the boards and you have to have that gap because it's solid wood solid wood wants to move a lot so it's going to expand and contract so you don't want it to push against each other and buckle you leave that quarter inch gap and you cover that quarter inch gap with the batten so this is true board and batten when we talk about board and batten style we do that with our Carolina coupe, for example, where we can definitely and have done true board and batten on it, but it's so it is expensive. It's a lot of cost of material and it's time consuming, so it's gonna be expensive with labor. But we can actually sheet the Carolina coupe hen house and then put in battens to make it appear as to be true board and batten. So one of the things I want to point out, this is true board and batten siding. A question we get all the time is Matt, where do I hang my feeder? What kind of feeder do we get? Well, one of my favorites is that regular galvanized 20 pound feeder for example and then you can just hang it and you want to hang it because you don't want the chickens sitting on it and defecating on it and making a mess um, but when you do hang it put it right in the middle of the run that decreases the chances from it getting wet um, very soon if not already we're working on making it as easy as possible to understand how many chickens you can have for each one of our coops, whether it's inside the hen house or inside the run and whether or not you can free range or not. The other thing too that I cannot emphasize enough, when you're building your hen house or you're thinking about what size coop should I get from Carolina Coops, the other thing I'm gonna tell you, chicken math is very real. Uh, so many of our customers are like, I'll never get more. You know, here we got six baby chicks, they're gonna get more. Always take into account when you're building your hen house, room for more hens. And there's two reasons why that's gonna happen. You're gonna find out there's more breeds, 
you're going to find out, okay, maybe there's more than two reasons. You're going to find out, which is my favorite now, um, how beautiful the eggs can be. There's not just brown eggs and white eggs. You've got your green eggs. You've got your turquoise eggs. There's even some pink eggs. You've got your, my favorite, your dark chocolate brown eggs from like your French copper marrons. You also have your speckled eggs like from well summer. And it's beautiful. It's like that fruit basket. You can have a bowl of eggs on your kitchen counter, or even on your dining room table, showing off those beautiful eggs. And yes, outside, not in a refrigerator. That's another whole story, but you do not and should not have to refrigerate your eggs. And we get questioned a lot. How do I clean my roost bars? Do I need to clean my, clean my roost bars? And I always tell people, it is a hen house. There's gonna get droppings on it, but you shouldn't have to clean out your hen house. Or I'm sorry, you should not have to clean your roost bars. If you do, it might be because maybe they're still young. Um, their vents, you know, when they're defecating at night, 50% of their defecation is at night, so that's actually quite a bit. Might get on here, but as they get older, they should just look like they're getting worn by their feet constantly sleeping on here. All right, so out here on the front of the coop, you're gonna see this beautiful Dutch door. This is a very common door you're gonna see on a lot of our coops. Um, not necessary, standard is just a solid run door, but what is nice about having a Dutch door is, one, it sounds really cool, but from a function point of view, let's say you don't want a free range. You absolutely cannot take the chance of letting one of your chicks get out, but you're a huge fan of doing something I'm a, I, I endorse greatly is that is take your chicken bucket. You know, I'll say it's the end of the day, it's after dinner, you're coming down, you wanna give your girl some treats. Well, you can just simply open up this sliding bolt right here and then you open up the top half and it stops them from coming out. Don't be surprised, it's not guaranteed. You, if you're really good and your girls are really friendly, they're gonna hop right up here, but they're gonna see that bucket. They're gonna see that bowl. They know what's about to happen and you just dump it right in there into the run and the chickens will consume that. Or one of the other reasons why it's nice to have a Dutch store is let's say you got that one dog that just wants to go and eat chicken droppings like crazy. You don't want them inside the run, but you still wanna let your girls free range. Well, this is an easy way. Instead of having an elevated chicken door, which we've done in the past, they can just hop in and out over top of this Dutch door and keep your larger dogs from getting in. Your smaller ones, like your Jack Russells, well, that's a whole nother story, but they would easily jump that. But that's another thing we've had customers recently tell us why they like the Dutch door. My favorite answer is, especially being a father, and there's nothing better. I mean, kids just love having chickens. But again, if you don't want them to go into the run, you can open this up and they still feel part of being with the chickens and inside the run area without actually having to go inside. Now, how much table scraps do I give them? And the best answer I can give is think about if you ever had fish. You don't want to overfeed fish. You only want to give them what they can consume in, well in this case with fish, about 10 minutes. But with chickens, I would never give too many table scraps that they cannot consume in 24 hours. And the number one reason for that is don't give pests a reason to come to your coop. Um, and pests not only rodents, but also flies, even though the chickens will have a good time with flies. So anyways, you can dump your table scraps in there. So a question we get a lot, what do you use on the inside of your run for the material? And I love that question because again, it allows me to say what I love to say. Think about where chickens originated from. Think about what chickens want naturally. So I'm gonna start with what they don't want. They don't want a concrete slab. They do not want pea gravel. They do not want sand. Ch chickens don't live on the beach, okay? If you wanna do it right, my opinion, and it's exactly what you see here, it is a mulch, a hardwood mulch that has been, comp it's in an advanced compost state, meaning it's almost soil, but not quite. And this is exactly what you would see on the forest floor. And it will be very beneficial for the microbes to break down the droppings. It's great to actually absorb moisture. You know, a lot of people freak out, I don't want it wet in there. Well, trust me, with this solid roof over your run, which you always want, It'll keep it dry enough where you'll never have a wet problem, but you, it, when you get a little bit of moisture in here, or even just ground moisture, it's actually good. The chickens will love it, um, especially for little bugs walking around crawling. I mean, look at the chickens. You gotta make sure they're working. You always wanna make sure they can scratch. If you use sand, this is not natural to them. If you use concrete slab, because I gotta go in there and clean it out. If you have to clean out your run, you got too many chickens. Always talk about, think about, do the math, chicken to coop ratio. When you have a foul smell, chicken, you know, a lot of stress with your chickens, diseases, you've got, I guarantee you've got too many. 
bigger is better, especially if you cannot free range. And if you cannot free range, you got to go as big as possible with the run. You cannot have enough space. Chickens need to work. Yes, we love them. Yes, they're our pets, but you got to make sure they can work all day long. They're scratching. And also keep in mind, if you're not free ranging, make sure not only do they have nice soil to scratch in, make sure they have everything else that they would need in nature. For example, water, feed, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But another one is make sure they have access to little tiny rocks, or a lot of times we call grit. That's their teeth. They need to swallow those rocks, go down in the gizzard, crush up their food. Um, and then you can expand on that based on their eggs. You know, if the shell is not hard enough, maybe you got to add some calcium, things like that. But got to clean out your run. You have a bigger problem and you shouldn't have to keep it simple. That's the only thing I, the best advice I can get. So a question, yeah, is it, is the compost safe to use in the garden? Now I am no gardening expert. I'm learning to be. And the one thing I've realized is you always have to be careful when putting, in this case, you know, raw feces inside the garden. Um, it is extremely chicken droppings. I mean, it's so high in nitrogen. It's awesome for your garden. But my understanding is it's all about timing. And if it gets to that advanced state and it's not in your growing season, you can definitely put it in your garden. My advice is not to put this directly onto your current growing vegetables, the ones that are growing now. All right. Um, but if you have trees, you can put it right around the base of the trees and or, you know, there's a lot of people that sell it. Um, I just know that I've seen firsthand, I cannot believe the power of chicken droppings when it comes to growing vegetables or plants. And, you know, I can't say enough. This industrial hemp, there's a reason why we can't keep it on the shelf. This is the good stuff. You can go on Amazon, you can go online. You know, I, I'm a huge fan. I love competition, this and that, but I, I'm all about educating the consumer. We sell the best hemp. I have to because we sell the best coops. What makes it the best? Bottom line is our hemp comes in from Normandy, France. They are in the inventors of the process of being able to separate the bast fiber, the fiber that is repellent that you use for textiles, um, separate it from the bast fibers and the herd. This is the herd. This is the absorbent part. And this is the diaper. This is the world's best diaper. Imagine going a year without having to change a baby's diaper. That's what this is. So what makes it great is it is 99.999% herd. Your cheaper stuff, get questions all the time. Matt, why is yours more expensive? It's because it's processed better. Don't pay for garbage. Why would you pay for something that's meant to be absorbent, but it's not 100% absorbent? Why are you gonna pay for, I'll be nice, 15% bast fibers that are repellent. That's not what you want. Um, that's what you're seeing in the other hemp. If you want to buy it, go for it. That's why ours costs more. I'm a snob about quality. I love this stuff. And also because of how well it's processed, I, I mean, I don't know if you can see it. It's next to zero dust. I'm an asthmatic. I got very sensitive lungs. Um, I hate dust. Chickens have very, have a very sensitive respiratory system. You, again, through and through, you can see the quality. Uh, you can see how much lighter in color it is. And actually very soon, I'm going to try to be a scientist and we're going to do a side by side comparison of absorbency. So anyways, industrial hemp can't say enough about it. It's awesome, especially for the deep litter system. And you know, again, it's antimicrobial, it's green, it's harvested after 90 days. It's a greener product. The microbes do so much better versus say, for example, pine shavings, that's very acidic. So question we get a lot, Matt, how much hemp do I put inside the hen house? Where do I start off with? And I always say four to six inches. And usually that means two bales for most size hen houses, maybe three with our larger ones. So there's a great example. What size coop should I get? And you're going to get all kinds of different information out there. Okay. Listen to me, please. I'm an animal lover. I'm a chicken lover. That's how this whole thing happened. But I'm going to explain to you why. Um, Chickens are meant to work. You can really technically never have a big enough run. And when I talk about a coop, I want to make sure I'm clear. When you have the coop, I'm referring to the overall structure. And then there's two main parts of the coop. You got the run, which is what we're standing in right now. This is their outdoors. This is, if you weren't free ranging, this is all they're going to have. If you're going to free range, that's great. It's still nice to have a run, but you got to understand what size run should I have for my circumstances and what size hen house. Here's how you figure it out. 
Well, since we're in the run, let's talk about it again. Chickens need to work. Yes, there are pets. Yes, we love them, but if they don't work, they're gonna get bored. Get as big of a run as possible. Um, if you can free range, good. Then maybe stick around that 10 square foot per hen for the run area, even though a lot of people tell you that's more than enough for keeping them in the run full time. No. You know, if you guys are watching this video right now, please leave the comments down below if you come with experience. Um, because it's, I'm not just saying this to try to sell you bigger runs. Uh, you just, you got to have room for them to do their thing. So, um, the other part is, okay, the hen house. What size hen house do I get? Well, one foot per hen on their bed, on their roost bar. Again, this is their tree branch before coops are in bed. This is where they're sleeping at night. If we're able to properly fit enough roost bar length for the number of hens, you're not gonna overload the hen house with nitrogen. Now, we have seen, and I'm not a fan of this, but you can definitely get away with it, especially using industrial hemp, eight inches per hen. But that's getting a little tight. I like a king size bed, that's just me. So we like the one foot rule. And in this case, because we have a hen house that is, um, God, again, I wish I had my tape measure. You'd think I would know this. I'm gonna say it's probably eight foot, seven and a half foot long. Um, we have three roost bars that are over 12 inches apart, 12 inches away from the wall. And let, let's just say eight for easy mass. So that's 24 feet of roosting bar space. So in theory, you could easily fit 24 hens in here. It will not overload the deep litter system. They'll have plenty of room. And again, we're talking large breed to standard breed. But let's say, oh, I'm gonna do 24 hens. Okay, great, no worries. You gotta make sure if you can't free range, the run space has gotta be large enough, 10 square feet, bare minimum. Trust me, you wanna go at least 20, your chickens will be miserable. So um, that's really it. Then the only other thing to always think about is the egg hutch area. And again, if you guys are watching, leave your comments down below because you're gonna understand what I'm saying if you already have chickens. I always try to tell people you want one nest box for every three, I'm sorry, for every four to six hens. And that is just so I can make everyone happy. But for your people that have chickens, I know hopefully you're already, already chuckling a little bit. Happens to me, I got all, I think I got 12 girls right now. They all share one nest box. But you know, I gotta make everyone happy. So I always say four to six hens per nest box. And you want that roughly 12 by 12 um, size egg box. And then again, I'll show you when we get on the other side, we had the egg hutch that I believe is, I can't even cheat the cardboard still in the way. We always make sure we can match the number of nest boxes to the maximum capacity at the one foot rule inside the hen house. So again, it, it all, we just, we've found the sweet spot so it all works hand in hand. And again, if you're building your coop, these are things, trust me, you must think about it. Oh, another question, Matt, what do I use inside my nest box? I don't like the industrial hemp. It's too loose, it's too small. I don't like pine shavings. Again, always go back to what do chickens do in nature? They will build a nest. It's actually a lot of fun watching them build a nest. They love long stringy material. So I like hay, I've used straw. I don't care if it's hollow, mites can hide anywhere. So there's that whole other argument. But um, use a material that they can use to build a nest, encourage their instincts, and it locks in and stays. The reason why I mention that is if they're constantly in there trying to build that perfect bowl shape and you're using small particulate material, one of the downsides to having a drop down door, and it's the only downside, but this is again solved by using the right nesting material, is that material can build up right here. And when you go to close it, you're like, oh, you're trying to push it because the material right here is not allowing the door to shut all the way. Um, so I always tell people when you're first setting up your chicken coop and that nesting material is in there and they're going to build their nest, they are going to kick out some material. So take the time, brush this off. That door should always shut just like that. Okay. And then after a while that nest, that material will be locked into that beautiful bowl shape and you should never have to clean it out. If your chickens are sleeping in there at night, something else is going on. If they're defecating in there, something else is going on. You don't need a roll away. Nest box, yes, they sound good, but if you have a need for a roll away nest box, something's not right. You're, you're creating more problems by adding a roll away nest box. Try to keep it very, very simple, but that's the whole gist behind our egg hutches. And it's a lot like our hen house doors. 
Just because it's a beautiful custom coupe, we didn't have to do anything different. This is what we do on our Carolina, our American, our Cali. It just works. It's the same material, same everything. I'm dying to mention, if I told you guys our new nesting material, I think I have them. Um, so they just got sheared. They got sheared yesterday. No, Friday and the rest of them getting sheared today. I think it's gonna be the best nesting material, the most expensive nesting material, but using what we call mohair. Or it's like wool, but it's coming from an Angora goat. And it's called mohair, it's an organic fiber. We've been using it in our coop. Our chickens absolutely love it. It's very soft and it looks really cool. Um, but it's pricey. <laughs> so we may or may not go with it, but I, um, you know, again, nesting material, just, I've seen people use carpet, but I like to, again, make the chickens work. Make them build a nest. There's not, nothing wrong with it. So you buy a coop from us and it's time to take them from, usually their smaller chicken coop into the bigger coop. How do you do it? Well, there are some, tips and tricks. One, you definitely want to do it at night. One, it's easier to catch chickens and handle them and move them at night because their night vision is awful. And I always tell people, take the hens from their existing coop, put them in the new coop, right on the roost bars. Make sure they don't free range. Make sure they go out the hen house on their own down into the run. And then you must, this is the critical part, because always remember, chickens are creatures of habit. Remove that old coop. If they see it, they'll go back to it. And by keeping them in your coop and not letting them free range, will force them to eventually learn, this is my new home. But that can be tricky, especially if you got that one maverick that found their favorite tree branch. And that can happen. It's rare, but it does happen. Um, but you know, chickens will eventually, if you keep consistent with the training by moving them or keeping them inside the chicken coop, they'll, they'll eventually learn. Not always guaranteed, but usually.